Hello again. My name is Luis Angel Ruiz. I'm a professor at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. In this video, I will describe a methodology for mapping floods using synthetic aperture radar images, and we will see a case study. This will serve as an introduction of a practical exercise for rapid flood mapping. This presentation is divided in four parts. A description of the preprocessing step of SAR images, including geometric and radiometric corrections, and some statistical filters to reduce speckle noise. Two standard change detection methods based on image differencing and thresholding, and supervised classification. The identification of evaluation indices, and finally a case study in the application of SAR images for rapid flood mapping. Due to the side-looking observation geometry, SAR images are subject to geometric and radiometric distortions, which must be corrected in two steps. First, the application of a geometric terrain correction to reduce the geometric mislocation of pixels in steep areas, and then a geometric terrain normalization to correct the topographic shades in the non-illuminated areas, as well of the overexposing effect in sensor phase hill slopes. The image on the top shows a SAR image before corrections and below the same image after the application of radiometric terrain corrections. Next step usually consists on the reduction of speckle noise, which is caused by random oscillations of the signal returned to the sensor due to the interaction of the wave with rough terrain surfaces giving a granular aspect to the images. For this purpose, statistical low-pass filters are applied, where each pixel value is modified attending to certain statistical distribution of its neighborhood. The simplest statistical filters are the mean and the median, where the pixel value is substituted by the mean or the median values of the neighbor pixels. A variation is the sigma filter, where the pixel value is substituted by the mean of the neighborhood, assuming a Gaussian distribution and excluding the extreme val values, which are considered as outliers. In the leaf filter, the new pixel value is computed as a function of the mean and variance of the neighborhood, but considering a more complex equation. This filter also assumes a Gaussian distribution of the noise. The gamma filter assumes that the original pixel value is between the local media and the actual value. And it assumes a gamma distribution of the noise, which in some cases is actually more realistic. This is an example of the effect of three statistical filters, sigma, li, and gamma, using neighborhoods of 7 by 7. Over a satellite radar image, we can notice the smoothing effect with the different effects and results. Once the noise is reduced, next step is to apply a change detection method. One of them consists on differences to images, spectral bands or indices, obtain in different dates and finding a threshold of change. This method is very sensitive to errors in geometric and radiometric corrections, but it is easy and fast to apply. The main issue is usually to find the right threshold. An objective approach is to select two samples, one from an unchanged area and the other one from a changed area to assume that they follow normal distributions and to calculate the optimal threshold as the intersection point between both of them. In this example, the optimal threshold will be around the value of 110. Another change detection method is based on the direct classification of two images with several bands acquired at different dates. They are combined in one file and then classify, including classes of chains. This method has the advantage of considering multiple types of changes, 
but the difficulty of the proper selection of classes of chains. However, the results are usually better than using the method of FIBA image differencing, even if it's more difficult to apply. In change detection applications, the evaluation of the methods can be addressed computing four indices based on comparing true positive, false positive, false negative and true negative values, which may be obtained by comparing the detected changes and the actual changes in sample testing areas. Thus, the MIS factor measures the omission error rate of the detection, the branching factor the commission error, the percentage of detection, the proportion of change correctly detected with respect to the change area, and the quality factor measures the proportion of change correctly detected with respect to the total area. Now let's see a real case study on rap of rapid flood detection and mapping using Sentinel-1 images. The event was located in the Ebro River Basin in the north of Spain and happened between 13th and 15th of April 2018. Two Sentinel-1 images were used, one from April 6th before the floods and the other one from April 13th during the peak of the floods. The preprocessing step included the selection of areas and right orbits, a radiometric terrain correction, speckle reduction with the statistical filters, and geometric terrain correction. Here we see a portion of the original image on the upper left without any filtering and the results of applying three different filters, Li, Sigma and Gamma, using neighborhoods of 5 by 5 pixels. And here, a detail where we can appreciate better the effect of the filtering, reducing the granular aspect of the speckle noise and smoothing the flooded areas. In this RGB color composition of two vertical vertical polarization images before and after the event, we see in black the permanent water due to the specular reflection in both dates and in red the flooded areas since they, there was backscattering from the rough vegetation before the floods but not after. Other colors show small variations of different land uses. These mosaics represent a similar RGB color composition of two dates images but using cross-polarization, vertical, horizontal, instead of equal polarization images. In this detail, we can see how three vegetated flooded areas still have diffuse scattering in both dates, before and after the event, so they present a white-pink color. Since roughness and heterogeneity of the terrain affect more to equal polarization images, usually Cross-polarization works better for enhancing flooded surfaces. If we take a look to the images and histograms of equal polarization, vertical-vertical on the top, and cross-polarization image, vertical-horizontal on the bottom, we see that in the second one, the flooded areas are better discriminated. In this case, the histogram is bimodal, and the selection of an optical threshold is easier. Here we see on the left a final mask obtained without filtering the original images for a speckle noise reduction, showing many false positive pixels out of the area affected by floods. However, the mask on the right image produced after the application of a statistical filter is much cleaner and those false positive pixels practically disappear. In order to enhance the extent of the flood, in the final map we can combine a water mass before the flood, here in dark blue, with a water mass after the flood, here represented in light blue, overimposed on a natural color high resolution image. Even more, we can compare the map of a particular event 
with the maps of expected flooded areas at different probabilities, for example, 10 years return period, 15 years return period, etc. This may be useful to calibrate and evaluate hydrological models. I hope this video was useful for you as an introduction to the practical exercise of rapid flood mapping with Sentinel-1 images. Thank you for your attention.